Well, good morning. Uh, I've received uh, an 8 a.m. briefing from our state meteorologists, and as many of you know, last night Elsa made landfall in Cuba. It's back over water, headed north over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. As of 8 a.m., the National Hurricane Center advisory located Elsa 55 miles west of Key West, and it's moving north-northwest at 12 mile an hour. Maximum winds are near 60 mile per hour, but Elsa is expected to be near hurricane strength tonight prior to making landfall in Florida. I will track parallel to the west coast of Florida today with strong wind gusts and heavy rain along with the potential for isolated tornadoes. I will make landfall along Florida west coast tomorrow morning. It's important that Floridians uh, don't focus on the cone. Impacts are expected well outside that area and if you look at how the storm is it's incredibly lopsided to the east so most of the rainfall is going to be east of the center of the storm and right now there are tropical storm warnings for 22 counties along Florida's west coast and a hurricane watch is now in effect for the Florida coast stretching from Pinellas County to Dixie County. A tropical storm warning means tropical storm conditions are expected within 36 hours. A hurricane watch means hurricane conditions are possible. Now storm surge will be a concern. There is a storm surge warning in effect for 12 counties uh, between Taylor and Lee on the Gulf Coast uh, and that obviously may impact uh, some folks who live in those low-lying areas. Much of north and central Florida have experienced above normal rainfall over the past two weeks which will increase the likelihood of flash flooding conditions with the anticipated heavy rain and I think that that's important whether it's a hurricane, a strong tropical storm, those winds are what they are. They obviously have impact but you're going to see a lot of rain dumped particularly on the northern part of the state that is already saturated right now. So those conditions even under normal circumstances could be present. Now, the interaction of the, the wet ground with even more rain, uh, you will see flash flooding conditions uh, in many, many parts of Florida as this thing moves through. So if you're in those coastal areas, begin your preparations now. Uh, be prepared to be without power for a few days and having enough food and water for each person and their family, um, including for your pets. It's important that Floridians have weather alerts turned on, especially as we see the most impacts will occur overnight with this storm. Uh, please heed all warnings from local officials. If they ask you to evacuate your area, it's for your own safety. Uh, counties will open shelters if they issue evacuations. Now, we don't anticipate any widespread evacuations as a result of this storm at this point. It pretty much has been focused on people who are power dependent or who have special needs. There could be targeted low-lying areas in some of those counties. And so what we would just tell people is, is heed the warnings. Uh, if those orders are issued uh, or if those uh, orders are recommended, uh, please, please heed the call on that. But again, in terms of any type of widespread evacuation, we don't anticipate that that will be something that's necessary. Uh, as you uh, are preparing for the storm, if you're going to mess around with your trees just make sure that you take precautions uh, for your own safety use the proper tools and materials uh, we see every year we see incidents result uh, either pre or post storm uh, for people who are cutting down trees and of course if you do lose power and decide to use a generator please make sure to use it appropriately the exhaust must go to open air and not inside your home not inside your garage and also not uh, inside under an open window. Sometimes people will put it right out their window, have the window open with the power cords running, and the exhaust comes into the house. Uh, as Kevin Guthrie and I have pointed out over the last couple of days, the last four years, there have been more fatalities as the result of people getting carbon monoxide poisoning than direct impacts from the storm. And so please use that appropriately and just understand that if that is put inside a house, uh, that is uh, very, very hazardous to people's health and safety. So the state is well equipped to handle the storm. We have the state emergency response team working around the clock. We are going to uh, increase the uh, readiness to a level one. We normally wouldn't do that for, for a tropical storm, but given the part of the state that this is likely to impact the most, most of those counties are fiscally constrained counties. And so Kevin Guthrie and his team are going to provide additional support for those fiscally constrained counties. Please monitor your local weather 
uh, service uh, for updates um, and begin your storm preparations. Uh, we're appreciative of everyone here who's uh, snapped right into shape to be able to deal with this after having dealt with, of course, the Surfside building collapse and after having over a year where they were in emergency posture uh, to deal with the coronavirus pandemic. I'm going to let the um, state e uh, DEM director, Kevin Guthrie, say a few things. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Thank you for your leadership on this. Um, again, our hearts and our, our hearts are out, uh, go out to uh, Surfside and our prayers. Uh, for the continued response there, we do have a, a microcosm of the state emergency response team still downrange uh, in Surfside helping them out. I obviously came back last night with the governor uh, to get ready for this event, but we, we arrived to an already activated EOC. Uh, and these uh, individuals, men and women of the state emergency response team, I cannot say enough about them. They are uh, professionals at what they do. They are the best in the world and uh, they, they have been carrying on for well over 480 days now straight. Um, the only thing that I would add to the governor's comments here is I did when I got back yesterday from Surfside, I had uh, personal phone calls with each and every county EM director that are, are, that are underneath a watch or a warning and asked them if there was any needs that they had. Only a handful of counties actually uh, requested some stuff from a truckload of water to a handful of personnel to help augment their very small programs. So we are filling those requests today. They will arrive prior to landfall. So uh, again, there were no unmet needs with the exception of about three counties that needed, like I said, anything from water to personnel. Uh, we stand ready. We will be here overnight tonight uh, working and uh, being on the ground ready to go if any of our counties should need us. Again, Governor, thank you for your leadership on this. Okay. Do you have any questions? All right, well, we'll have, yeah. Yep. You earlier mentioned 6,000 utility workers. Yeah. The National Guard also being posted anywhere or? Yes, sir. Uh, as a part of uh, the governor's uh, initial roll-up, we did call up about 200 Florida National Guardsmen, maybe about 250, but uh, we do have them on standby, ready to go. The majority of them are at our logistical staging center down in Orlando, helping us push uh, commodities out of that uh, warehouse. We'll have a, um, another update. The, the 11 a.m. advisory for the National Hurricane Service, if they are going to make changes to the track, we don't anticipate any major changes being made. But I do think, and again, the, the impacts are going to be far to the east of the actual eye of the storm. But we are in a situation where they're looking at uh, Levy County, Citrus County, Dixie County area as landfall. But if it does wobble one way or another, I mean, that obviously would impact that. So, so we may see an update in the track at the 11 a.m. And then we'll obviously have a 5 p.m. advisory as well. So we'll uh, continue to provide updates as we go. Thanks.